Gee, that's that's weird. I thought I I thought I left him. Or well, maybe he's downstairs, huh? <laughs> so we thought we'd do something kind of special today because today is a special episode of Jaden Stitches. Why is it special? Well, <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> and thank you guys for 10,000 subscribers. I almost can't even imagine that number in my head, and that is how many people are following the show, and I am so thankful to each and every one of you. So today, as a special thank you for 10,000 subs, we are going to make the Enderman from Minecraft. We've had lots of requests to do more Minecraft stuff, and more toys, and more questions about how to read patterns. So this Minecraft pattern is going to be available for free on our website and you go to our website the information is down in the comment box plus there's our website right there you go to web uh, go to our website you click on the workshop page at the top scroll down and you'll see all of our free patterns the thumbnail for this guy will be right there and you can click on the PDF underneath the thumbnail and print off the pattern and if you're not familiar with reading patterns, this is a great opportunity for all of you to get the pattern and follow along with the tutorial, and you'll have a much better idea, uh, section to section to section, how a amigurumi goes together and how you can read a pattern. So if down the road you see things you want to try, but there's no tutorial and there's only a pattern, you can try the pattern and have some success. So I invite you to go to our website, grab the pattern, bring it back, and then we will get on with this tutorial for this rather spooky, but neutral, mob. <laughs> Did you get the pattern? Awesome! Okay, I'm going to assume that a lot of you who are doing the Enderman with me today have also made our Creeper. And I'll link the Creeper pattern uh, tutorial down below. That's a tutorial that we have. And if you haven't done the Creeper already, you might want to start there because a lot of this section building is similar. And I'm going to move a little quicker with this tutorial than I did with the Creeper. But having said that, if you are comfortable with the single crochet stitch and making little flat two-dimensional pieces, then Feel free to try this one out, especially since you have the added protection of the pattern alongside you. So, without further ado, let's warp to the craft table. I'm using acrylic worsted weight size 4 yarn, about 75 grams of it, to make the majority of the Enderman body. And I've got the exact same size and style of yarn in a little bit of light purple and a little bit of dark purple and it's pretty important that all of your yarn is the same size it doesn't have to be the same brand but it does have to be the same size and if you're going to make it out of acrylic it should be all acrylic if you're using wool it should be all wool this will keep you from having issues down the road uh, with the different fibers trying to mix or not mix as is usually the case so acrylic is good for making toys you're going to need a yarn needle and a handy little pair of scissors and I'm using my standard 4.25 millimeter hook, also known as a G6. But if you're in the UK, you can use a size 7. Um, you can also use a size 4 or a size 4.5 millimeter. Anything in that range is just fine for making an amigurumi. And as long as you've got all that, let's get started. We're going to begin with the head. There are six pieces involved in making the head. Two of them are the same and four of them are the same. So we're going to start with the top and bottom pieces. The top and bottom pieces are eight stitches by eight rows. And because we're doing this in black, I felt that it would be a good idea if I had pieces made beforehand so that you could sort of see the size that they should be. Um, just because me trying to show you all the different stitches is a bit tricky when we're using black yarn. So this is the top or bottom of the head. We're going to start every single piece with a slip knot. And you can make a slip knot however you're comfortable. I like to make a little loop 
take my hook, pass my hook through that loop, so just like that, grab the yarn, and then pull both ends. And I don't want it to be too tight, I want it to be able to move around on my hook. Because we want each row to have eight stitches in it, we need to chain nine to begin with. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that is a chained length of nine. Nine, because the chain on the end is always going to be our turning chain. So you don't count that chain as a stitch, you're just going to use it as a turning chain. So you're going to skip that first chain from the hook, and you're going to go into the second chain, and we're going to single crochet. Every piece of the Enderman is made using single crochet. So you're going to single crochet back across that foundation row into the second chain from the hook and each across, and at the end of row one, you will have eight single crochets in your first row of the head top or bottom. And when you get to the end, it's always a good idea to count, especially when you're using a darker yarn, it's a little tricky to see. And remember, it's best to start counting from the hook. So you never count the loop that's on your hook, you start with the one that's right after. You count all of your stitches, and remember that that last one is always a little funny, it's kind of like it kind of tends to want to, to run down the edge of it, but remember to count it. You should have eight stitches across. Now, you're going to do a total of eight rows. At the end of every row, you want to add a turning chain, turn your work, always skip that first stitch because that's your turning chain, and work directly into the first real stitch, and that would be the stitch that sits right on top of the first, or the last, I should say, single crochet from the previous row. So work into that first true stitch, single crochet, and single crochet all the way back across for row two. When you get to the end of row two, chain one, because you always need to have a turning chain, flip your work, and work single crochet all the way back across row three. You're going to do the same thing, chain one, turn your work, and keep single crocheting. You are going to do eight rows of eight single crochet each, and when we get to the end of those eight rows, I'll show you what to do next. All right, I'm just nearing the end of row eight. I'm putting in my last single crochet, and you're going to count your rows. So I'm going to try and get as much light on this as I possibly can. And you can see that every other row, there's sort of a natural indent. So you can see that there's one, two, three, four kind of curving sets of rows. So that means one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight rows. It's always good to count. You'll be able to see your rows a little better than you can see mine because there's going to be better lighting, I hope, where you're working. And that's why I wanted to make sure I had a square made. I wanted to have at least one piece of each section made so I could show you uh, before we got into it, just so you could know exactly what it should look like when you have it finished. So when you've finished your last row of single crochet, you're going to take your scissors, just snip your yarn, and fasten off. And when I say fasten off, I mean you grab that little string that's left and pull it back through the loop that was on your hook, take it, give it a tug, and it knots off. But you're not finished. Every piece you finish, before you move on to the next, you have to weave in the ends. So you take your yarn needle. I like to weave it sort of through a bunch of the, the the tops of the little stitches, right through the middle of all my work, I don't know, six, seven or so, weave the little tail up into the needle eye and then just pull it all the way through. 
that just makes it neat and tidy and it keeps your little ends out of the way because you're making a lot of little pieces that means you're going to have a lot of little ends and that can get kind of confusing and they can get in your way especially when you're trying to sew all these pieces together so I feel it's really important that you weave in all of your little ends as you go this keeps your work neat and tidy and it won't be as confusing when you go to sew them all together so that is the top and the bottom of the Enderman head. You can see that they are a perfect match for each other. You want to make sure that you make two because the head of the Enderman has a top and a bottom. Next we're going to move on to the back and front and sides of the Enderman head. Now the Enderman's head is not as tall as it is sort of square. So the top and bottom is a perfect square, but the front and the sides and the back of his head are actually one row less than a square. So you're still going to make them eight stitches across, but you're only going to make them seven rows deep. So eight by seven. You need four of these pieces, and I have already made three, and I will demonstrate making number four. You're going to start with a slip knot just like every other piece. And like the first piece, because this is going to be eight stitches every row, we need to chain nine to begin with. One, nine. Nine, just like we did with the first piece. Skip that first chain from the hook, go into the second chain, and single crochet. You're going to single crochet all across, that row so that you have a total of eight single crochets, eight stitches. Each row will have eight single crochets in it. At the end of each row you will chain one, turn your work, and keep on single crocheting. So remember to chain one and turn your work at the end of every row. Count your stitches at the end of every row because you want to have eight stitches per row. And for this piece of the Enderman, you are going to single crochet seven rows. So each of your four pieces for the sides, back, and front of the Enderman's head will be eight single crochets long by seven rows tall. I'm just nearing the end of row seven for the sides, front, back, and sides of the Enderman. I snip my yarn, pull that little tail back through that loop, and then give it a tug, and that knots it off. But I'm not finished yet, I want to make sure I weave in all my ends. And there you go. That is the front, the back, and the sides of your Enderman. All four pieces are eight stitches long by seven rows high. So you need four of those. And that, combined with the top and the bottom, is the head of the Enderman. Now we're going to move on to the body. The body is a longer piece. This is the front and the back. So you're going to need two pieces. And the front and back pieces are going to be eight single crochets wide by 12 rows tall. So you're going to start with a slip knot. You're going to chain nine because you need to have a turning chain. Once you have your nine chains, you're going to skip the first chain, single crochet into the second chain, and single crochet in each stitch across. Row one will have eight single crochets in it. Like every other piece, when you get to the end, chain one, turn your work, and keep on going. This piece will be eight single crochets wide, so every row will have eight stitches in it, and it will be a total of 12 rows tall. There, I finished the second piece. This is the front or the back, and I've got two. You need one front and one back. So two pieces in this style of eight stitches across by 12 rows deep. Remember to always count 
there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve rows. And I know it's tricky to see my stitches because everything's in black, but there's one stitch, two stitches, three stitches, four stitches, five, six, <laughs> seven, and eight on the end. So eight by twelve. You need two. One for the front, one for the back. Now we're going to do his sides. This is the side of the Enderman. So it's the side of his body. It's going to be made this way, but you're going to use it tallwise. So it's easier to make it 12 stitches by one, two, three, four rows than it is to make it four stitches by 12 rows. So always try to take the easy way out when you're making Omigurumi. <laughs> so this is a side piece. You need two pieces because his front and back are made. Now we just need the sides and they will go together like this. So there's the front and here's a side. And because you're making it a little bit differently, you might have to stretch and squish a little bit when you're sewing it together, but don't worry, it won't show when you're done. So, like every other piece, we're going to start with a slip knot. And because we're making a section that is 12 stitches across, we need to chain 13. One, two, once you have your 13 chains, Skip the first one, because that's your turning chain. Work directly into the second one, and you're going to single crochet. Single crochet all the way across, back to the beginning. You will have 12 single crochet stitches, and you want to make this section four rows tall. All right, I have finished both of my side pieces. So you need two of these. 12 stitches by 4 rows deep. 1, 2. Now we'll make the top and the bottom parts of the body. This is the top of the Enderman body, so it will attach to the body like this. It will sort of sit at a right angle. And that means that we're going to make it 8 stitches across by 4 rows deep. Why 4 rows deep? because the body is four rows across and it will sit on the body like this. So in order to start this, we're going to begin with a slip knot and because we're working with an eight single crochet base, we want to chain nine. Skip the first stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet in each stitch across, when you get to the end of the row, you will have eight single crochets. You'll chain one, turn your work, and keep repeating until you have four rows. Remember, you want to keep weaving in all of your ends as you go. And when you've finished pulling your tail in, always give it a little bit of a stretch just to make sure that you didn't pull it out of whack. Then compare both pieces, make sure they're the right sizes because you want them to be exact. And that is the top and the bottom of the body of our Enderman. Now I think we'll move on to the arms. Woohoo! So these are the arms, or the arm pieces. You're going to need a total of eight of these. And this is where you're going to want to make sure that you are definitely counting if you were being lazy about it before. Each one of these arm pieces is 27 stitches by two rows deep. So, you're going to make eight. To begin, you're going to make a slip knot any way you're comfortable. And if you want a 27 stitch length, you need to start with 28 chains. One, two, three, seven, 28. So, 28 chains. You're going to skip the first one single crochet into the second one and single crochet in each chain across. 
you're going to have 27 single crochets at the end of row 1. Now here's a little tip. This is a long, narrow little strip of fabric that you're making and you're going to notice that as you work your tail end wants to kind of keep curling up on you and that might get kind of irritating <laughs> especially when you turn around and you've got the tail end with the little long string sort of attached. You want to just pause every moment and just give it a little tug. Push it the other way and that will help keep it from getting all curly and squiggly when you're finished. See, there it is curling up again. So just be patient. You are making some rather small fiddly pieces and if you find yourself getting kind of irritated, <laughs> you're probably not alone. <laughs> so just relax. Remember to count. If it starts to curl up on you, just pause and give it a little stretch, kind of press it backwards with your hands and that will also keep it from getting really wrinkly. Remember at the end of row one, you want to chain one for a turning chain and turn your work and work back, make two rows deep each row with 27 single crochets in it. Okay, that is an arm piece. It is 27 stitches by two rows deep. And you want to make eight of these because you need four for each arm and these are all going to be sewn together down the long edges together eventually. We'll get to that. So you need eight arm pieces. Woo and an arm wouldn't be finished without a top or a bottom, so let's make a few of those too. This tiny squiggly little square is the top of the arm and the bottom of the arm and the bottom of the leg. So for simplicity's sake, you're going to go ahead and you're going to make six of these. You want a top and a bottom for each arm and you need a bottom for each leg. You don't need a top for the legs because the legs are going to be sewn directly onto the bottom of the body. So you don't need a top for that. So you just want to go ahead and make six of these and you do that by beginning with a slip knot. If I starting to sound like a broken record, that's okay. <laughs> One slip knot. And these little squares are only two single crochet by two row high. So to get a row of two, you need to chain three. You always need one more than the number of stitches that you need if you're single crocheting. So there's my chain three. I'm going to skip the first one, single crochet into the second, and into the last. It's like the shortest row. Chain one for a turning chain. Flip our tiny wee little work. Single crochet into the next or the first real stitch. And single crochet into that last one. And you know that last one is always a bit funny, but it's there. And that is it for those little pieces. And I'll snip my yarn. Pull that tail through the loop. Give it a nice tight tug. And I'm going to weave in my ends just like I have with every other piece before now because I want to keep that consistency and I want to keep that tidiness. And it's easier to do it as you go than it is when you uh, finish everything. It's just sort of a, I just feel it's, it's a nice kind of quicker way to get it all done. And you're probably going to end up with little pieces that stick out of the ends. So you have a couple choices here. You can turn around and weave them back into the body of the work or you can just give them a little snip. There. That is the top and bottom for the arms and the bottom for the legs, or I suppose the bottom of the foot, technically. You need to make six of these. Two single crochet by two row deep. And the last piece we're going to make are the legs. And the legs are pretty much constructed exactly like the arms, but they're a little bit shorter than the arms. And the Enderman has long arms and long legs but not as long as the arms. So for the legs we are going to create a slip knot. Say it with me, <laughs> create a slip knot. And the legs are 25 stitches long. So that means if your first row needs to be 25 single crochet you need to make a chain length of 26. One, two, three, all right. There's a chain length of 26. 
you're going to say it with me skip the first stitch and single crochet into the next stitch and in each stitch across so that your first row will be a total of 25 single crochets. Each of the leg pieces, like the arms, are only two rows deep. So you're going to single crochet 25 single crochets, chain one for a turning chain at the end, turn your work, and single crochet back across those 25 stitches and that will be the entire piece. You want to go ahead and make eight of them so that you can have four sides per leg. Once you have all eight of your leg side pieces, you have completed all of the pieces you need to make your Enderman. Now we're going to embroider his face. The Enderman has a very simple face, so you're going to take all of your back, front, and side head pieces, so the back, the front, and the sides, and you're going to pick one, I'll take that one, to be the face of your Enderman. So this is the piece that you're going to embroider his eyes onto, and Enderman is really, really basic. He only has a couple of eyes, he doesn't have any other facial features, so that's why this is really a fun and simple pattern to kind of try out your Minecraft skills on. This is where we're going to take some of our light purple yarn. You really don't need that much because you're just going to be embroidering two eyes. So I say cut yourself a length that's about 24 inches or 60 centimeters long. You really don't need a whole lot. You'll probably end up cutting a lot of that, but just in case you're uncomfortable sewing. You're going to take your yarn needle and thread it up. And the eyes on the Enderman are three rows from the bottom of his head. So you go, there's row one, there's row two, here's row three. So I'm going to work across row three. His eyes are pretty long. So I'm going to bring my yarn up on the inside. So I'm going to pretend this is the back and this is the front. I'm going to bring my yarn up on the inside of that edge stitch and I'm going to leave a long string behind because that's what I'm going to use to sew it. I'm going to identify the middle stitch, which I'm going to say is you know, somewhere in the middle. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and I'm going to bring my, my hook, or I should say my needle, down before I get to that middle stitch. So I know it's black and I know it's hard to see, but pick the middle stitch and then just before it, bring your needle down back behind like that so that you've got a longish whip stitch. Then on the other side of that stitch, and it'll be easier to see in a second, you're going to bring your needle up on the other side of that middle stitch. So the back looks kind of like this. And then in a straight line, you're going to bring your needle back down to the back on the inside of that outside stitch edge. So it's probably easier if you just see what I've done. I've created a long whip stitch to the middle. I've gone under that middle stitch and then I've created another one back to the end. I'm going to make two more whip stitches on this side, just going up in the middle and down at the side and up in the middle and down at the side. Don't pull it taunt. You don't want to stretch your stitches so that you have holes. You want this to be nice and sort of full. Then I'm going to do the other side. So I'm going to bring my needle up on the other side of that mi middle stitch. I'm going to try to make sure I keep my my free tail free. <laughs> then I'm going to bring it down through that same inside edge stitch up from the middle and back down again. There. That's it for the whites of his eyes. Now the whites of the Enderman eyes are kind of a light purpley color, so that's why we went with the white purple. You can flip your work over now and just knot those two edges together or those two ends. That's why you want to, don't do it too tight because you don't want to pull your stitches out of alignment. So just 
kind of tie it as tight as you dare and you can trim your ends and this is just going to wind up on the inside of your Enderman face so you can just literally sort of tuck them in to the end, underside of those stitches just to get them out of the way just so they're not flapping around on you but you don't have to weave them in or do anything fancy because that's going to be the inside of the head and there are the beginnings of his eyes now to finish the eyes you're just going to take a small amount of the dark purple you, again you don't have to use that much you can probably use about half of what you did for the light purple part of the eye so I've got about a, a foot, foot and a half here. You're going to do the same thing. Thread up your yarn needle. Take the face of your Enderman. And we're going to make little stitches over top of the middle of the eyes. So I'm going to just pick a spot, which I think is pretty much the middle of the eye. Bring my needle up from behind. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to leave some tail here just so I've got something to knot it with and then I'm going to go directly down I'm going to tuck it down right down on the opposite bottom part of the eye so I'm going to just wiggle my wiggle my needle <laughs> and pull it not too tight and I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to come out the same place that I brought it up the first time. And then I'm going to bring it down through the same little place. Now if you're using a thicker yarn, you might want to do two stitches. You might want to do three. That's completely up to you. I think I'm pretty content with two because that's a pretty wide piece of yarn that I'm using. So now I'm going to go to the other side. Same thing. I'm going to pick a spot that I feel is right in the middle, bring my yarn out, try to keep that tail free, and then I'm going to go right down opposite it at the bottom of the lighter part of the eye. And I don't want it to do it too tight, so if you accidentally pull it too tightly, you can kind of slip your needle under there and just yank up a little bit, and that'll loosen it again. And I'm going to put in a second stitch in the same place there we go I'm pretty happy with that <laughs> then I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to knot those two ends together not too tightly stiff my yarn because I don't need it anymore and just kind of tuck them in here and there those ends are all going to be buried on the inside of the head so it doesn't matter and there you go two creepy enderman eyes Woo that is the embroidery part of this amigurumi so now all we have to do is sew all the pieces together we're going to start with the head you want to get all of your head pieces and I find that this is sort of a smart thing to do lay them out where they belong. So I have a top piece and a bottom piece, I have his face, and I have the other sides and the back of his head. And that keeps it in my brain where I want these pieces to go. So I don't accidentally pick one up while I'm in a flurry of sewing and sew the wrong piece in at the wrong time. So every time I do a body section I lay all of the pieces that I need out in front of me so that I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna sew the whole thing together using the black yarn that I, I crocheted them with and I'm going to cut quite a long long length um, this is probably three feet maybe even longer because I want to sew around all of the edges first I'm going to grab my yarn needle and I'm going to start with the side of his head so I'm going to take his face and I'm going to take the next piece and all of the stitch work is going to be done on the outside. So I know a lot of you will be breathing a sigh of relief because there's no, you know, turn the right sides in and then sew it together and then flip it inside out. Nope, we're going to sew it everything together on the outside because that's what's going to help create that square boxiness that gives it a definite pixelated look. So I'm going to start right at the top corner. 
I'm going to bring my yarn and this is how we're going to put together every single piece. So you're going to put the two pieces together that you want to sew together. And I like to bring my yarn through and just to avoid any issues, I create a knot right at the start. So the first thing I do is make a double knot to secure my yarn. I will weave this little tiny tail in later and you won't even see that little knot that I've made. So I don't put too fine a point on it. Then I just start. There are no real stitches down the sides. It's just the raw edges of your single crocheted fabric. And I try to put a stitch in at the edge of each row. But if you put in a few more, that's fine. You don't want your stuffing to poke through. So you're going to go ahead and use your own judgment here based on the size of your own individual stitches and how thick your yarn is. And you're going to put in as many stitches as you feel is necessary down the side of every single set of pieces that you sew together. So be careful to make sure that all of the little colored bits that you had for his eyes are tucked inside and that you don't accidentally run your needle through that because you don't want to pull your eyes out of alignment. And just keep picking up a stitch on the back and a stitch on the front and sewing them together. This is going to take you a little while, so, you know, relax, enjoy it. You're making a toy and it's going to be really cool when it's done. When you get down to the bottom, I like to pick up the last sort of edge of the last stitch and the edge of the other last stitch. And I might run a couple of um, stitches through that just to make sure that it's nice and flush because you kind of want your edge to be mostly straight. If it's not, don't worry. It really won't show when you've put the top and the bottom on. But just so I kind of know for my own reference, I like to just try and even it up as best as possible. So I'll put a couple of stitches in there. There. So that is the front and the first side. Now because I like to speed stitch things together, I will take my hook and on the underside, so the inside of the head, I'm going to just pick up a couple stitches just like that, really nothing fancy, run my yarn through it, and then I'm going to start sewing the next set together. So I'll pull my yarn up through the bottom edge of this, and you can do this any way you like. If you want to knot off and restart every single row, you're welcome to do that. Um, but this is me being lazy and I like to be a little quicker when I do things. So I pull my yarn along the inside so that it's ready to go for the next set. Just remember if you're doing it my way, don't pull too tight because you'll end up going and squishing your head or any set of pieces you're sewing together together. You don't want to do that. I'm still sewing together sides. So I'm going to take the next side that I have ready to go and I'm going to, same thing, line them up and start sewing over top across the right sides or the outside of the edge of my pieces and this will help keep them square and cornered looking. Alright, I have my front, my back, and my side pieces all sewn together in this interesting looking cube and now I'm ready to sew on the top. So I'm going to sew the top on next so I pick up one of my perfect squares for the top. And remember your top pieces are eight by eight, eight single crochet across by eight rows deep. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to kind of line up a corner. It's always good to start in a corner. I know I say that a lot, but corners are good. And you're going to hold your pieces together so that you can whip stitch across the tops of them. And you're still going to be on the outside. So I'm going to put a couple of edges stitches there. And when you're lining up pieces that have an actual single crochet edge to them, line up the stitches. It makes it a little easier to sew. And I like to put at least one sort of whip stitch into each pair of stitches. If you're running out of yarn, you can knot it off and start over, or you can knot your yarn not another length onto the existing one that you're working, just to make sure that you 
keep all of your knots on the inside of your work or make it long enough that you can sort of tuck them in as you go. Uh, but you can sort of do whatever you feel is comfortable there. So that's the first set. Now that might be the trickiest. The next ones are kind of a lot easier. You just keep holding the pieces, line up the edges, and keep sewing the pieces over top of the right side to make it look as square as possible. Good idea to take your time. There's no rush here. And you want this to make, you want this to look right. You know, like it doesn't have to be perfect, but when you're putting this kind of time and effort into something, you want to A, enjoy the journey, <laughs> and B, you want to make sure that you take enough time and effort and energy and, you know, trust yourself that you get something that you like the look of when you're finished. So always stop and reassess. Does that look straight? Should I take out a few stitches and redo it? Nope, looks good. Okay, I'll keep going. Am I going to run out of yarn? Do I need to cut myself some more yarn? Don't rush. I'm probably the last person who should be telling you not to rush because I miss rushy pants, but <laughs> don't rush. <laughs> and just keep doing this all the way around. Once you have the top part of your head or body piece, whatever piece you're putting together, most pieces consist of six sides. So once you've got your sides put together and your top, you can start putting on the bottom piece and you're going to put um, at least half of the required stitches or even three quarters of the entire of the required stitches in before you stuff it. I went ahead and I sewed down one, two, three sides of the top part of my little cube here and now I'm going to add stuffing. So I've still got an open open piece and you're just going to grab your stuffing and you're going to put it in in small pieces. Uh, you want to try and use both your fingers to spread it out and sort of make sure that it goes across and into the edges. This is going to help make it sort of squarish and you want to use small bits at a time because you don't want to have lumpy, bumpy spots sticking out um, in the sides or the top or the bottom of your piece. You also don't want to overstuff the parts like the head and the body. Um, they don't have to be stuffed too firmly either. They want to be a little on the light side so that they can sort of help stand upright because the body needs to be supported by the legs. So just put in enough that it gets a square shape it does not have to be overstuffed. And once you've done that, you've got enough stuffing in, then you can finish sewing it shut. Just a quick note on stuffing your long limbs. So this is a leg, and this is just a little bit shorter than what the arm's going to be. But obviously when you get to, you want to sew all the long pieces together first, and then add the bottom. And before you add the top part, which is really small, you might want to consider stuffing the whole thing. So don't bother sort of pushing, like doing what you did with the other piece, pieces where you sew two or three of the sides of the top down first. Because this is such a small piece, just stuff the entire limb first and then you can sew the top on later. So there's a couple of nifty little tricks I want you to try. You can't obviously get your finger down to the end of this limb. So you're going to want to put in a little bit of stuffing and you're going to want to grab something like a knitting needle or a chopstick or a long crochet hook or a pencil or something long with a blunt end. So this has got a nice blunt end to it. And you want to just sort of tuck that bit of stuffing down to the bottom. And then you want to get another little piece, not a big piece, just a little piece, stuff it in there and then do the same thing again. And this kind of helps you um, stuff it without having to bunch up a bunch of stuffing and s use the stuffing itself to tamp it down. This, this will help keep the shape uh, that you're going for, which is that sort of squarish look. And it'll also kind of take the stress off of trying to get all the stuffing down that long tube. So just give that a try. Okay, you should have all of your pieces put together now. That would be his head, his body, the longer tubes that are his arms, and they have a top and a bottom. I just have some strings ending, uh, hanging out of them still because I'm going to attach them using some of those, but you don't have to. If you've woven all your strings in, that's fine. 
and you've got your legs. They are the shorter tubes and they only have a bottom, they don't have a top. So those are all the pieces you need and now we're going to start sewing him together. So the first thing we're going to do is sew his head and his body together. And his head is wider um, than his body is. So you're going to sew the body to the middle bottom of the head. So you're just going to line these two things together where you think that they belong. Get yourself some more black yarn. Hey, <laughs> Cut yourself a length, nice long length. You don't want to run out. So, you know, two, three feet, three feet maybe would be good. Thread it up in your yarn needle. And then because this is the skinnier piece, the, the body, I like to anchor my yarn in a corner, so a corner edge. Make myself a nice little knot. And I can weave in the little tiny tail later, so I don't worry about these little tiny tails. Then you're going to put the two together. And this first little bit could be tricky, so just be patient with yourself. But what you want to do is pick up stitches across the bottom underside of the head, across the middle. So across those sort of middle rows, you want to pick up a stitch. Right at the edge, right at the edge middle. And then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to pick up another edge stitch. So I'm just going to use the edge, the actual corner where the two pieces come together. I'm going to use those pieces. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go pick up a stitch right next to the one where I I started on the bottom of the head. So sort of the next one in a row. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back and forth, pick up a stitch on the body, pick up a stitch on the head. <laughs> and like I say with everything, be patient, take your time, stop every once in a while and make sure that it's going to go on properly because you don't want to sew a whole line or a whole row and then realize that you're you're crooked or you're off or something. So put in a few stitches, pause, sort of shape them around, decide that he's still in the right place and then keep going. And what you're going to do is you're going to sew all the way around the edge of the body, keeping it in the middle of the bottom of the head. Now that you've got his body and his head put together, and remember there's going to be overlap of the head over top of the front and back of the body because the body is skinnier than the head is. Next we're going to put on the legs and the legs are the shorter tubular pieces that are open at the top and I have string kind of left over from sewing so I'm going to use it but if you've weaved in all your ends that's fine. Just cut yourself a nice long length of black thread and thread up your yarn needle and you're going to do the same thing, it's the same sewing technique oops, it's the same sewing technique around the top of your leg attaching it to the bottom of the body as it was to attach your body to the bottom of your head and your legs are going to be attached on either end of the bottom of the body so there's going to be a little bit of space in the middle and you want to just align all of your one side, so take sort of the outside, whatever you want to be the outside, and you're going to line that up with the very edge of your body. Now your legs, remember, are two rows deep and then your body width is four rows deep. So you can afford to squish some of your stitches together so that your leg kind of fits in to this edge. And I know this is black and I know this is a bit tricky to see but let me get a couple of stitches in here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to stitch up 
across the two rows that is the outside of my leg and I'm going to match them up with sort of a couple of the middle rows of the body. Now if the body, if your leg sort of end up kind of being flush with the back and the front, don't worry about it. You want your legs to just be at least flush with the edges of the body so that there's a little bit of space in the middle. And once you've got those first two stitches on, then you can just sort of do a little playful squishing with the leg and pick up a couple stitches on the bottom middle of the body and sew across the front of the leg. There we go. And then you're going to keep stopping and spinning it and making sure that it looks like it's in the right place. That looks good. You might notice too that your your leg pieces and your arm pieces tend to want to spin on you a little bit. Don't worry about that. You can just twist them back into the right shape. Anyway, you're going to go ahead, sew those two legs onto the bottom part of your body, and then we're going to put on the arms in a slightly different way. All right, we've got the legs on, and those he's starting to look a lot like an Enderman. Now we're going to put on his arms, and the arms are the longer tubes, and they have a top and a bottom, and they are going to sort of sit on his sides. So they're going to be level with his shoulders, which is sort of the top part of the body. And I have a couple of ways you can join them. So if this is just something you're making for yourself, then you can, um, you can kind of use some yarn and just anchor them through a couple of stitches on the inside, just so you have a little bit of play and your arm will move a bit. But if you're making this for someone who's a lot smaller and possibly a lot rougher with their, their toys, then you're going to want to um, stitch around the top three rows of the arm. So all the way around the top three rows of the arm, picking up the same stitches on the inside of the body. So you're going to make them flush with the shoulder, so the top, just right where the seam between the neck and the body is, you're going to make them level with that, and you're either going to sew around a few stitches on the inside of the arm and the shoulder of the body or all the way around the top three rows of the inside of the inside of the arm. So I'll leave that up to you but you're going to use the same sort of sewing technique that you did to put the other pieces on. Just pick up a stitch here and pick up a stitch on the other side and then sort of tug them all together and once you've got that on you're all done. All right the arms are on, the legs are on, the head is attached to the body where it should be. You have completed your Enderman. And I have to say, for a neutral mob, he's pretty creepy. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. One crocheted Minecraft Enderman. A little creepy, but extremely cool. <laughs> That's it for this special edition of the Jada and Stitches show. Thank you so much to all of you for 10,000 subscribers. Thank you for joining us on Facebook and Pinterest and Etsy and Instagram and sharing your photos with us. Thank you for sharing our videos and tutorials with all of your friends. And if you haven't already joined us in the Facebook community, I invite you to do so. It's a supportive and creative environment and we have an awful lot of fun there. And a special thank you to all of you who have gone to our Etsy store and purchased one of our patterns and gone to our website and put a little tip in our tip jar. Thank you so much for the support. We really, really appreciate it. And it helps keep us going here at the Jaden Stitches Show. That's it for this week. We will see you again very soon for another tutorial, maybe another quick tip, or something else. We're never really sure. <laughs> Until then, happy crafting, everybody, and we will see you again soon. <laughs>